but not quite something that I could just pick up and just uh, I think, yes, go not, with. not quite, yeah. because, uh, you know, it's, uh, it does assume uh, basic proficiency with neuroanatomy. Neurosurgery. It's up there with rocket science as a career that people say you've got to be smart to be able to do. Just how complex is it? Well, it's a great field. Um, it's, it's a very special field within medicine, I think, because there's a lot of complexity, like you said, because uh, the brain and the nervous system, our nerves, the spinal cord, these are all uh, underlying uh, uh, us as human beings. And, you know, makes us who we are and what we're capable of. As neurosurgeons, we deal with all disorders of the brain and the spinal cord and its supporting structures. And so very vital as a supporting structure are the blood vessels that supply the brain and the spinal cord and the nerves and so forth. And so that is my particular area of focus is blood vessel diseases as it pertains to the nervous system. You know, to be clinically excellent, one has to be able to put themselves in the perspective of the patient and also of their family, you know, their their um, supporters and their caretakers, and and there's no two people that are, are the same. So no two patients have the same problem, and and their response to the problem is also different, uh, even if it is the same problem. And so I think that individual attention uh, that's really really key. All that being said, uh, you co-wrote a handbook on operative neurosurgery. Uh, just how does one go about making a friendly user guide to operating on the brain? Right, right. sure. So you know, there's a lot to learn, and uh, that's why uh, training takes a long time. Uh, that handbook was designed to really target the beginning uh, learners, uh, people who are, are you know, really just starting off, not, not the experts, uh, but people who are um, sort of new to the field and, and really need some things pointed out. It's estimated that there's only one neurosurgeon for every 65,580 people in the United States. Now, not all of us are uh, necessarily need a neurosurgeon uh, as a typical office visit, but of that number, even fewer are women. How have you broken barriers in your career? Uh, there are, were women who came ahead of me um, in the field, and so of course they were role models. Uh, and I, along the way, had many mentors who didn't take any issue with the fact that I was female and uh, you know trained me to the best of my ability. So yes, you're right, it's a field that was traditionally occupied uh, by uh, male neurosurgeons, uh, but that's just because the field is a relatively young field. Uh, it was uh, started here at Johns Hopkins, actually, by Harvey Cushing. Um, and uh, in that time, the field has evolved uh, a long, long way. Uh, you know, we, we do things now that nobody would ever have dreamed of doing. Uh, but um, as you said, luckily there's not a lot of people who need neurosurgeons, so uh, we don't train that many new neurosurgeons every year. Uh, it makes me very proud to have uh, you know, young students, you know, whether it's college students or medical students, who demonstrate an interest in neurosurgery without regard for being what gender or what background they have. Uh, because they see that now there are people in the field who, who can do it. Dr. Wong, thank you so much for your time. Uh, that was a closer look.